Hello my beautiful hammerheads and welcome to how I paint my Sylvaneth Dryads. This isn't going to be the usual kind of painting tutorial, but I will go through how I started the project, how I tackled every step and what really took so long for this video to well, finish and to be uploaded. So as you might have guessed, the intro is not really scripted. <laughs> so yeah, this is from the heart. So this whole project basically began as, as I've said, a painting tutorial for my Sylvaneth Dryads. But while painting, I realized this isn't going to be my style. I tried this once before with my Luminous Wardens. It did work out pretty well, I would say, but this isn't my style. I tried this again with my Soul Blight Gravelord Skeletons, but I really did not finish this. And slowly but surely I know why. But before I go into all the details, let me just talk about it. Before I start a project, I ask myself, is it a showpiece model? Is it just for playing? And or how much am I invested in the army? This ultimately tells me how much time do I want to spend with each individual model. And the Sylvaneth, as much as I like them, they are just a sideline show for me. They are not really wood elves, yes, of course, we do have Big Mama Alariel, which is awesome. We have Kulathis, the exile from the Cursed City box, which will pretty much will become a faction in the next Sylvaneth book. I would guess so, because she's of the Vald sub-faction, which hasn't been mentioned anywhere before, but it is in there. But I do love nature, so that is the reason why I do have Sylvaneth. And they're pretty sweet models. So I primed my models with Wraithbone. For the color scheme, I just wanted something else, because brown is the obvious choice for trees, greens are an obvious choice. This didn't really struck with me. I wanted something which I can identify myself. The most fun while painting is not while I'm chasing a certain color scheme. So this is basically color agnostic. As I'm not going to play with these in a tournament in which I do have to paint the certain glade, with these models I will play against my brother so I can choose whatever glade I want. I can't remember if I did saw this color scheme on the YouTube channel of Lila Mew, Dana Howell or Vincent Venturella. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I can't remember. It's been so long since I've seen this. But there was a picture of one of my favorite movie series of all time, X-Men. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh no, no, no. It's Lord of the Rings. but. X-Men, the color scheme stayed with me because it's this post-apocalyptic and these colors are basically used in, well, every kind of movie posters, post-apocalyptic movies like Mad Max or anything like that. It's this orange-turquoise mix. And just to figure out how it will look like, we have free real estate. We do not have to waste a model just to say it like that it's not really waste because we always can paint over our paint jobs but we have our basis on which we can try color combinations so the two middle parts i just painted it on let it mix while it was wet just to see how it will react with each other the two paints on the outside I just waited for the other two to dry 
and paint these over it, just to see if there is a little bit of difference in there. Well, with these results, I just started painting. As for information, these are Athermatic Blue and Griffhound Orange. Those are the main colors for my dryads. So I started with the Athermatic Blue. Always pick as large as a brush as possible, but only as large as you are comfortable with, with the size of the model itself. Because with contrast paints, it is really take as much as possible on the model and so it does not dry as fast. Because when it dries, you will rip the surface area and it will create splotches, which is not recommended or not for me in this case. But dryads have this beautiful texture on the bark. So we can use this to our advantage. If it pools, just use your brush and take the poolage and distribute it somewhere else on the model. I coated everything on the model except the, I don't know, let me call it loincloth and the leaves. And I did avoid the mouth and if possible the eyes. As you are seeing right now on the screen, I smallly converted my branch nymph just to point her out on between all the models because they're all trees and I really like the skull. As a next step, I came back to Wraithbone and just cleaned up all the parts I wanted to paint with Griffhound Orange. But while painting, I quickly realized, as I've said in the beginning, this is not my kind of painting tutorial. As a certain fear just crystallized in my mind and it stuck with me. So the models just sat on my table for a few days up until a week or more. I can't really remember right now. And well, yeah, maybe it has something to do with my depression, but and I'm always glad about people telling me, yeah, do this, do that, because there are things that are really helping, like going outside. But as many of you might know, I have a whippet and they need to run. So I'm at least one and a half hours outside every day. So going outside isn't really the problem. Well, maybe it's this caution sign, but just ignore this. <laughs> so while looking into myself and how I would do all this, it was just coming down onto me like an avalanche. And it basically crippled me and my painting mojo. I did build stuff. I did clip out stuff every day, but painting, the thought of it, crippled me. And this is not what I wanted from the hobby. So what is it really? Up until this point, I really did not know. So I forced myself into doing something basically new. I bought a second <laughs> webcam, which is not really helpful for the situation, but it did help me to get closer to my vision of on how I wanted to do this. So as you are seeing right now, I switched from the side view with just a single webcam to this, I paint the model and you see me to webcam style. But this did not really butter the bread on which I wanted to eat. <laughs> but at least I was able to put Griffhound Orange on everything else on the model. So the loincloth, the leaves, the eyes and the mouth. Except 
on my branch nymph because well the skull face head is something else for later and here again on the loincloth just put as much as possible on it and distribute the poolage on a different part of the model and you will get a nice clean result so after everything has dried they again stood there for a couple of days but this time not as long as the last time because in my mind the next step was pretty easy i just grabbed my bottle of wraithbone again and with a makeup brush which is pretty cheap and the bristles are very springy which i do like in my dry brushes i just dry brushed over everything this just pulls everything in the paint job together so after that the models are basically finished it's not much but these are just dryads and the other way around it would as i've said they would just be brown with some green leaves so this is my iteration of the post-apocalyptic action dryads <laughs> but there were two skulls on my miniatures one in the hands of a, well a dryad and the other one is the head of my branch nymph so with a diluted mix of skeleton hort with contrast medium i just painted these two skulls and after they dried i heavily diluted wildwood with contrast medium and put this diluted mixture into the eye sockets, the separation points of the horns and went a little bit on the tips of the horns to give them more depth. For the bases, I went with something neutral. So I put on astro granite debris on all of them. After astro granite debris, I took Dragonhof nightshade and Ethonian camo shade and just put it on the dried astro granite debris. And this was a pretty inconsistent style of putting it on because I just slapped it on there and even let it mix on some points so it gives a little bit of interest to the base and it's not just one simple color. After that I just painted the first layer of Mechanica Standard Grey onto the rims of the bases and now the real struggle began. Well, maybe it's the beautiful view from outside the window in my hobby room. Well, that wasn't it. But after that, the models were basically finished. I just needed some tufts and the second layer of Mechanicus Standard Grey for the rims to get a really nice coverage there. What did happen? As of right now, I really don't know. My guess, it's the fear of finishing a project. I really did not want to finish this. And as I've said, as of right now, I do not know why. Because it wasn't really work to put into the models. And it wasn't that I did not want to continue with the hobby. I wasn't burned out and I did build models. I just did not want to finish these dryads. It even went so far that I actively avoided this room. I always have a mug of water on my table so I can just come in and start painting but over all this time it's weeks have passed and i do not over exaggerate here it was 
weeks. The water evaporated, my table got messier because I just put stuff on there. I did not want to see the table. And this might be a, something deep-rooted, which I'm not qualified to identify myself. But maybe this is th uh, something which some other people might experience. Because just to avoid painting, I clipped out a full Raikonor. I base coated many other models. I built so much stuff, which took by far longer than just painting base rims and put on tufts. I don't know, this is something I have to go deeper into. <laughs> but over this time, I realized how I wanted to do videos with the painting guide style. There are many styles of painting presentation on YouTube, on Patreon or anywhere else. And this is the beautiful part of the hobby. But I want to convey my thoughts and feelings to you guys. Because this is a hobby in which the community itself is such an important part. We are helping each other with everything we post, on everything we criticize, on everything we want see and see on Reddit, on Instagram or anything. Even if it's just scrolling through Reddit and Instagram, seeing those amazing miniatures or kit bashes, it helps someone else to get an idea. And no idea is original. It sounds mean, but it really isn't. Every idea was used somewhere else and we're just rehashing everything. But this ultimately doesn't matter. There is so much stuff out on the internet. We cannot see everything. I spent so much time looking for new miniature artists, new painting presenters. I'm looking into so much stuff and I either can't keep up or I have watched everything of certain individuals on the internet. <laughs> and there is still more, but everything is getting reiterated by someone else in a different way. And this is good, because everyone describes something in a different way and everyone learns something in different ways. Just because we have two people talking about the same painting method does not mean that everyone will understand both of them. One will understand the one painting presenter, the other person will understand the other painting presenter. That's just brain chemistry. It's not really brain chemistry, but <laughs> I think you know what I mean. So after much self-loathing, <laughs> I really forced myself to finish these dryads. So I picked up my brush, put on the second layer of Mechanica Standard Grey and called it a day. And now you're asking, where are the tufts? Well, I ordered them back in December last year. But Army Painter sadly has some distribution issues. <laughs> so yeah. As of recording this, it's still not on the way. But in the end, I am really happy that I forced myself to finish these models as much as I feared the outcome. And I know that is an irrational fear, but it is still a fear. And I really have to work on this because my pile of potential is not getting smaller. <laughs> However, this is the first step on a healing route. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the video up until this point. It is an unusual painting guide. I know, I am sorry. This could have been done in five minutes. 
as there is not much to talk about. Yeah, it's just Dryads. <laughs> but I guess this is my style of videos with painting in it. And as I am older than many people might think, I probably want to share my experiences and other stuff in these videos. And I don't know, this is going to be a weird ride. <laughs> The next one will be different, do not worry. Uh, but every time I paint something and I realize or experience something similar to this one, it will be a different kind of painting video. So again, thank you so much for watching. What are your thoughts about this? please let me know in the comment section down below. I am keen to know what you have to say. And while you're down there, do all the YouTube stuff, because hitting buttons is fun. Have a great day, my friend. Stay fantastic. Stay hydrated. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!